In today's video, we will showcase all the stars at the exciting launch event of the Marvel Studios original series, Echo. Make sure to watch this video all the way through for the exclusive interviews with the cast and crew on the red carpet. My hope for the fans is that they can see that people with disabilities can do anything they want. They can go for the moon, you know? Maya herself is a perfect example. She can fight, she can do anything. She can beat the villains up. I guess we'll see exactly what happens in the show, but the audience, sometimes, you know, we don't, we, I want everybody to know that people with disabilities are just like everybody else. It's beyond exciting. We've been waiting for years. I mean, we started this back in, I think, November of 2021, and it was filmed in 2022. So to finally have it happening after all of the hard work that everybody put in, you know, to make sure that this came to life, it's beyond exciting. I felt extremely fortunate, not only just working with the Choctaw Nations, but the Cherokee, the Salish, I mean, every single nation that was represented had their own specific representation. So like the Mohawk, I got to literally learn the history from their historians. Instead of just reading it from a book or finding it on the internet, like I actually had, you know, the people of their nations giving me, you know, their own historical stories. So I felt extremely fortunate. I mean, this show has been such a labor of love from the beginning and has been really blessed with some of the most creative people I've ever worked with. Um, from Sydney Freeland, our incredible EP and director, our leader, uh, through the rest of the crew and the incredible cast. I mean, it's amazing to have everybody here tonight to celebrate what I think is a major achievement for the studio. Yeah, you know, Sid 
she met with the, the, the Choctaw early on in the process and pitched them the project. And, you know, it really was um, a partnership uh, from the beginning. In fact, I would say it was even more than a partnership. The, the, the Choctaw and the, the, the amazing influence they had over this project really is in, in every single molecule that, that is on screen. I learnt ASL um, for, uh, you know, ECHO, and it was really important for me to be able to, um, for Alakwa to be able to communicate and for me to see her and uh, be able to be there and scaffold her for the work. Um, and, you know, Doug Ridloff was an incredible asset as well. He came in. I used to call him Big Thumb because every take, it wasn't just for performance and technical issues. I would always turn to him and he would put his big thumb out and that, I knew that the ASL was perfect. So it was actually really fabulous. It was like there was languages within languages within languages. I always consulted with the Choctaw Nation. There was a number of... Uh, you know, members of the community that were there. It was really important to me. My dad's Aboriginal, so it was very important for me to be able to um, make sure that everything I was doing and wanting to do was culturally appropriate. So, you know, again, really proud to have done, gone on that journey, and, and I think uh, everyone's going to love the result. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of anticipation. Uh, there's excitement here, and I really, I'm really excited for people to see this finally. And we get to see it on the big screen. You know, I feel very fortunate to see it on the big screen. Um, yeah, I think people are just waiting to see it. Well, it's it's branching off to a different direction. Also, it's a bit, it's darker and it's more brutal. And you have an amazing cast, and yeah, I think uh, the audience is going to really, you know, it's not what they're expecting to Marvel, and I think it's going to really blow them away. You know, Alakwa Cox for being the lead in one of her first movies. She is a pro, a champ, and I really want people to see her performance. Uh, she's nothing like the character, but she is a badass. Yeah, she's a badass in real life. But uh, I'm really excited to people see, see her work, and I think people are gonna really blown away by it. This energy is insane. I love this. Um, you know, to be a part of something so monumental and at this level is, is so cool. Uh, I, I come from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I grew up in Los Angeles, but I'm from Muscogee, and so you know, just me being here, it represents something like on a bigger spectrum. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we waited for so long to be here, and the energy right now is completely buzzing. Everybody seems so excited and so enthusiastic to bring this to life, and. Um, yeah, I'm just really thankful and really grateful to even be here, you know. To be able to kind of go back to your roots and kind of find out really who you are is something that I was really excited about to be able to do throughout this show. Um, but it's a really big connection point. And also just connecting with your family, being, you know, leaning on the people who you know are always there for you. The best thing I've ever experienced in my life. It was really fun and I really, I really liked it really inspired by complex characters and uh, Maya Echo is definitely that. Um, there's so many cool facets to her and we get to see so much of what makes her her uh, in this show and uh, all of those things combined plus you know the, the amazing resources and backing of working on a Marvel project and having all that behind you and that amazing team uh, supporting you all the way it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. This character, I think, that maybe some Marvel folks don't know as well, uh, is 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 so deep and so fascinating and intricate uh, and and exciting. You know, more than anything, she's awesome. The the energy is so palpable tonight. There's so many Indigenous folks everywhere. I think everyone is so excited to finally get an Indigenous superhero, antihero, somewhere in between. But to have Indigenous people and specifically the Choctaw Nation be on such a platform like the MCU is, it's like the inner native geek in me is like freaking out. <laughs> It was really humbling getting to learn ASL. It's such a beautiful community and culture that I haven't necessarily had access to. And, and so to be invited into the space and to, to really take on that responsibility of learning ASL and playing a coda, a child of deaf adults, is it was really important to make sure we got it right. And, and I really attribute that to Alakwa Cox, who was so, so patient with us and so talented. And also Douglas Ridloff, who is one of our producers and the ASL master, who really put such specificity. There's Plains Indian Sign Language, there's Simcom, there's um, ASL, there's also signing, de depending on the characters, different proficiency levels. It, it's such a detail that we wouldn't be able to get without somebody being from that community behind the camera. So it's something that I'm really proud of and, and it's something I'm still learning ASL um, even after the show. So yeah, super proud.
We're here tonight, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited for the fans to see the show, to see how it all comes together, and especially with deaf representation in these roles, it's going to be amazing, the Marvel TV show. First of all, I have a script. And I read through it to get really an understanding. And I work with the director as well, one-on-one, -on -one, to get a feel of the pace. I analyze each character who will be learning sign language during the show and look at the characters, the actors, the actresses, and see if it's going to be an easier process for them or if it's going to be a longer process harder process because some for some people it takes longer and so I develop and build on that depending on their pacing I look at the backstory why are you signing so well maybe why is signing a little bit harder for you and then I integrate that with the story so that it makes sense for them when people see them signing and others sign really nice others sign a little sloppier you know there's levels of sign language and I want to make sure I work with each character each actor or actress to connect with that we work together for quite a few months teaching them, designing the language, especially to tailor to them. And on set, if they make any mistakes, I'm the person who kind of edits that, comes back and looks at it to make sure that it's appropriate. Well, I would say, you know, a deaf superhero, that is badass, you know? And there's not just one, we have two superheroes that are deaf now. So I wanna see more coming. That's what I'm excited about. It is very exciting tonight. It is exciting that this character represents the first of what we're calling the Marvel Spotlights which is taken from our comics division, where many of the characters that people know and love now started in what was called the Marvel Spotlight, where we were able to take a character who may or may not have been connected to the far-reaching corners of the Marvel Universe, but had an incredible character-oriented emotional story to focus on, and that's what we're doing with Echo. And she had a great standout appearance in the Hawkeye series where you learned a bit of the backstory and a bit of the connection between she and Kingpin. But with this show, we get to go back to Oklahoma to see her family, to see where she came from. And it's really a very good personal story. It's our first TVMA, which we're excited about because we didn't have to pull any punches throughout the whole show. Well, I think the best thing about the show is that uh, all of those groups are speaking for themselves and the writers behind the scenes and the directors behind the camera and the actors on screen um, are all members of that community. So the amount of collaboration was really amazing with members of the deaf community, the hard of hearing community, the Choctaw community. And it really is a story uh, about the Choctaw people and about this hero, Mayo Lopez, um, told by so many members of the of the actual community so uh, they they and this show speaks for itself the energy is always uh, uh, high on the red carpet it's fantastic yes we have our first tvma hard hitting dropping all the episodes all at once special presentation so i, f I think you feel that kind of excitement this is a story about a family that's had a lot of heartache and, and struggle over the years, coming together and finding a, a, a way to, to, to get along and, and exist and love each other. And that's the real, the real um, energy and dynamics of the, of the series that I love so much. I think it's surreal for a lot of us because, as you'll see in the show, a lot of us are not necessarily overlapping, although we're all intertwined. We didn't always get to see each other on set, so I think seeing one another and getting to celebrate what we did, that felt like so long ago and the accomplishment of it being done, we're just all really excited to share it. I think what I find incredibly inspiring is that she's incredibly flawed and she's doing her best. and. She is trying to figure out how to do that, to show up for herself and also those who came before her and her grief. So I think it's just seeing that and seeing her push through it and seeing community and family portrayed in the way that it is in the show, which feels authentic and gritty and real. I just am so proud of that. <laughs> It is so amazing to finally get to show the world. We're showing three episodes tonight, which is so cool. Uh, it's got some of my favorite stuff on the show that we're seeing tonight. It's really exciting to be here. All the stars are here. Uh, our directors are here. Our writers are here. It is, it is quite a magical night, and it's been a long time in the making. Audiences are going to love Alakwa as Maya. They're going to be inspired when they see her, but really they're just going to want to keep seeing more of her in the future, I think, which is really exciting for us, because when you introduce a new and awesome character like Maya that kicks so much ass, you're going to want to see her continue to kick ass for the next couple of years. So I'm excited, and I really
really hope it's as well received as we think it's going to be. Really, at the end of the day, this is an emotional story about a complex character, a woman that hasn't been in touch with her family in decades, and now we're seeing her come home for the first time. So I think that audiences are going to show up for the blood and violence and the cool stuff in the trailers, but be surprised by the emotionality of the show and how, how heartwarming it actually is in the end. Putting together a really authentic and very thoughtful cast was a challenge and a glorious, wonderful one. We had incredible coll collaboration from Sydney, from Katrina, from my incredible team, Chris Sar, Jacqueline McKenzie, Greg Korn. Uh, I think we really put our whole heart into it and we're so happy to get legendary actors like Tantu Cardinal and Graham Greene and, and the rest of the incredibly high level cast with Son McLaren and Chasky Spencer. You know who they are. I don't have to tell you every single name, but honestly, every single person, Debbie Jacobs, every single person that joined the cast felt like a huge win. Um, and it was a really exciting process. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's very it's it's thrilled to be talking about the, the project in the past tense. So uh, you know, I'm very excited to uh, have the the series be shown to the public and and for people to be able to meet Maya Lopez and her family and her community and and Vincent and Kingpin and see all of the great wonderful um, uh, things that we've been working on uh, behind closed doors. Yeah, no, I think one of the, one of the great things about this series is that you know we're not dealing with the fate of the universe, you know, we don't have these huge like cosmic consequences that we're kind of beholden to, and so what that allows us to do is tell a, a deeply human story. Um, and uh, we always knew that that was going to be the, the the thrust of it, and we knew it was going to be grounded. We knew it was going to be gritty. We knew it was going to be uh, uh, kind of street level. And then the question was always like, how much can we push that envelope? How much can we lean into the grit? How much can we lean into the violence? How much can we lean into the humanity? And and think, you know, Marvel's just been amazing collaborators along the way, and we've it's been a uh, amazing uh, partnership and you know I think it's it's something that evolved naturally uh, through the storytelling process. I'm very excited for people to meet Maya Lopez you know I think I think it's it's definitely a um, right now as we speak it's a very exciting time you know Lily Gladstone just won the Golden Globe last night for Best Actress you know uh, something that's been a long time coming and then uh, 24 hours later we're fortunate enough to be here on the red carpet for a premiere of a Marvel series led by an indigenous deaf woman um, and so I, I'm just very excited for audiences who aren't native and who aren't deaf to, to have a chance to, to, to um, be a part of the world. Determination, um, strength, tenacity, uh, power. Um, I haven't seen what they've done with it all, but um, for me, in my experience, it was really uh, spiritual in, in a sense of connection with ancestors and and uh, whatever the difficulty, there's access to a way of, of getting through it, you know. And, and uh, I'm hoping that what we'll see is Maya getting back in touch with her essential self that she's been separated from for a long time. It's great. Everybody worked so hard on this project. It's going to be amazing. I'm very happy. It's good to see everybody's face, too. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm very happy for Alekwa, especially. Yeah, I think it's it would be impossible to not be inspired by Alekwa's performance, and then I guess the character itself. The character is such a powerful woman. You know, it's amazing. You know, the it's all there. You know, her whole story is there, and she's such a unique actress in so many ways. You know, so it's. It's fantastic. I can't imagine them not being just taken on this journey they're going to love. I, could, I mean, I've seen a few of the episodes and I, they're just so good. Oh, this is an amazing moment, especially for uh, representation of indigenous peoples in TV and in film. And we've had a great few years with quite a few different shows. And also uh, Maya, or Alakwa Cox, who plays Maya, uh, representing not just the indigenous community, but also the deaf community, uh, as well as the uh, uh, amputee community as well. And uh, we couldn't ask for a better, better uh, person to do that. She's amazing. She's amazing in the show. It was amazing to work with her. And um, it's, a, it's an amazing night for everybody. I, they're just going to see, uh, they're going to see a, a, a TV show that's from a native perspective with a native actress as the star as well as, a, again, a deaf uh, actress. And I think that the audiences nowadays with all the streaming services going on that are, are looking for different content and Echo covers all those bases.
Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.